Now I'm going to talk about well, my presentation is titled Decorators in Rails, or but get the HTML out of your model in Jerk, or maybe a little bit more fun, dinosaurs, lasers, and the decorator pattern. So first of all, we'll just talk a little bit about the decorator pattern. Um, and this is what Wikipedia says. And I was actually surprised to find that Wikipedia uh, succinctly described a design pattern. Because I don't know if you've ever looked up design, any design patterns on Wikipedia. But usually, like the first section that's supposed to be like the quick summary of what that design pattern is is like four paragraphs of really, really dense what is supposed to be English. Um, but in this case, this, this is all, this is the intro right here. And, and I mean, that's, that's exactly what the decorator pattern is. Very easy to understand, basically. Um, but I have a different way that I like to think of it. Uh, so let's say you have a T-Rex, right? <laughs> so when we like add view code, essentially, to our model, what we're trying to do, essentially, is add, basically breed a T-Rex <laughs> with a laser cannon for an arm. And that's ludicrous, because that's really difficult to, how many trials does it take to, to get that right, to, to breed a T-Rex that is born with a laser cannon for an arm? It's awesome, but I think there's a better way, and the decorator pattern is, is this better way. We're going to add the laser cannons to the T-Rex afterward. <laughs> so, is that original? Uh, no. I had those toys. Dino Wars, man. Yes. 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 Uh, Dino Wars. So, as you can see from this freaking amazing <laughs> image, adding laser cannons to the T Rex after the T Rex is fully grown and under understands how to use its existing limbs is uh, clearly a much better pattern. So, we're going to talk about Draper. Uh, that is the. the decorator pattern gem in rail Ruby on Rails that currently has the most mind share uh, it's being actively developed um, there are others uh, that I'll, I'll mention briefly later uh, I've actually used Draper so that is another reason why I'm gonna be talking about that so view models for rails and if you want to check out some details about Draper you can there nope that's fine so this is an admittedly potentially crappy uh, model that actually exists, and I just copied this code. And so this is this is a model. So let's say you have a model that does some normal stuff, mo mostly mostly normal stuff. Um, so this is what you may end up doing, and you can't really see it, but there's a comment here that says I snipped out some stuff. But uh, this is a common thing um, that people will do when they just need they need to get some information out of their model and make it look sort of pretty-ish. I have no idea if these are right, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not interested in looking up the actual screen from time uh, symbols and whatnot. Those are things. I know that. I just don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, so, so, you know, you want, you want your job day to look prettier than, than the, the typical thing that Rails spits out. And you want some string about the total number of viewers for a job. Uh, so you do something like that. That sucks. So then this is what you're, you know, that, so that makes for a kind of nicer view. But now you have crap stuffed in your model. That's about a view. It's not about a model. It's not uh, logic that has to do with your data or anything. It's, it's, it's view crap. So this view is not, not horrible uh, now that you've shoved crap in your model. But it definitely could be better. So let's see. Instead, we're going to create a decorator with Draper. So. You know, I mean, you guys can read code. Um, what you can't read here is that probably H basically exposes Rails helpers. So if you need to use any of Rails helpers in your decorator to eventually output code to your view, you, you, you call H. And then L is a locale helper, which, if you're not familiar, is kind of awesome, especially when you're dealing with dates. Um, I won't get into that, but you can obviously look that up on your own. Model within a decorator is how you access that actual object. Uh, that you have decorated. Um, so in this case, and American time is uh, <laughs> something I defined in the locale <laughs> file. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> everyone else in the world does like day, month, year, or maybe year, month, day, but American time. I'll also 
uh, p.m. and a.m. So that's in my American time uh, format. <laughs> Actually, I should make a gem out of that because I use it everywhere. Uh, but anyway, so now we've got our pretty published at, pretty job date method, basically. Uh, here's our total viewers thing, which is basically just pulled from the model into the decorator. Uh, and then you may have noticed in the view I had a thing that rendered the markdown of the job description. Uh, so this is, we'll show this in a decorator, it's going to make our view look a little bit nicer. So now our view looks like this. And this is simple and this is easy to understand and now instead of having, you know, job, uh, string from time, uh, shit there, or that whole long string that you saw in the decorator before, now everybody can understand that. This is going to be the publish that date, the total number of viewers string, the description HTML. It looks great, right? <coughs> and so this is how we really do the, the magic, essentially, of getting our thing decorated in the controller. Um, you can do it, obviously, there are a couple different ways here, and in a way that you can't see at the moment, because uh, my bad with the whole syntax highlighting thing. Uh, so this is, if you have a collection of things that you want to decorate, just call job decorator dot decorate and pass it the collection and it'll take care of it, which is very nice. I thought I was going to have to do some jumping through hoops. That's actually, if I remember correctly, a fairly fairly new thing that actually works in Drinker. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, you can actually just call job decorator dot find and it will pass through to active record and figure that shit out for you. There's a thing down here that you can't see. If you have an existing uh, object, um, and now you need to decorate it, you would call job decorator dot new and pass it that object and it will decorate it. Uh, here are some other decorators. Um, honestly, I think all three of these are not very actively uh, developed at the moment. Has anybody used any of these? Cool. Did you try rolling your own before? No, um, and Tim and I discussed that a little bit last time. Um, I originally thought, this is stupid. I should just roll my own because the decorator pattern is not complicated. Rolling my own wouldn't be complicated. Um, and then I was like, well, I'll just look at Draper and see what exactly Draper does. And it does like all of the things that I would want a thing that I rolled myself to do. Um, and then some, so I just want Draper. Does that make me lazy? Okay. Yeah, let's call it efficiency. Maybe. Oh, okay. It's smart. Lays efficient. <laughs> That's not French. <laughs> this is though. <laughs> all right, I'm done. That's all. Any questions about decorators? Does that use simple delegator under under the covers? Um, I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry. Does anybody solve this problem in a different way? Sort of. I mean, you can use help. Don't write Yuka. Problem <laughs> solved. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. I, I guess I should have slightly mentioned this. I is anybody opposed to cursing? I mean, I've already ruined it. If so, <laughs> All right, I fucking hate helpers. Um. So I used to. I mean, you know, when you start in Rails, like they're like, if if you have some complicated logic in your view, move it to a helper. Like that's the convention, that's you know DHH's opinion or what have you. And that's fine until you realize that you have, for one thing, it generates a helper for every like resource, quote unquote, that you generate, which is stupid. And then you have a bunch of like random helpers stuffed in the helpers directory that really don't correlate to anything else, or some of them do correlate to something, and very clearly you should, it, in an object-oriented, a perfect object-oriented world, you should be calling object dot, passing it that message, as opposed to you're going to end up naming your method the name of the message you should be passing that object, only you're going to add on like in job or with job or some stupid shit like that. It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. So you end up with this unwieldy directory of helpers that are difficult to figure out what is stuffed in every file. Either that or you end up with application helper having you know, a couple hundred lines worth of shit that belongs in a decorator, in my opinion. Anybody else like really love helpers and want to hit me right now? That's fine. You? Yeah. You do love helpers? Yes. Oh. 
I know you won't argue with me. I wish you would. Do you use really like generic helpers or like like resource specific ones? Like that's uh, where I struggle. With. I like generic <laughs> ones when appropriate, but I mean, it's essentially like the way that you've described it is not quite right, or it's not giving it the correct level. I don't think like those are supposed to be for generating complicated HTML, not for making decisions about your model. So if you're making decisions about your model in the helper, I agree that's that's freaking terrible. But if you just need something that like does some HTML building for you, they're they're just fine. I I believe. I use But it's it's like a it's like a level thing, right? So if you have a thousand helpers, then maybe you want a different solution. But if you have right. like five Right. I will admit I use there are three fairly generic helpers that I use on like every site. It's title, as in the actual HTML title uh, element, um, meta description, I believe, and like meta keyword. Yeah, probably something something like that. Oh, maybe okay. maybe I create a custom errors for potentially if I need, but. Totally reasonable. Any other questions? Where would you toss that? I put all of those in the application helper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are really general, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, I really, I really like the decorator pattern for uh, for doing like as JSON and as XML if you have to do such a terrible thing. Because um, that stuff gets so crazy. Right. It's so easily stuffed in the model. Well, that's true. And so, like, I think that's from from what the projects I've seen this used on before. Uh, that was always like the very, very clear win. Um, I haven't used it much in the HTML pattern, but I, I think there, you know, I think there's a, there's a time and place where I just haven't ran into it with respect to that. But you avoid view code as well, if I remember correctly, right? Correct. <laughs> Joel, yes. how how do you feel about this versus Ravel, say? I would prefer Rabbl for building API stuff. Um, if I was building HTML, I would, I would probably use this. Right. I mean, they're not mutually exclusive. In so. particular, that's what I meant for like I mean, he was he together, was saying for you know good. use the decorator pattern for as JSON and, and the like. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried it. I guess you could use them. I mean, obviously you could use them both. Sure, you could. Interesting. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Was Rabble. Rabble is awesome. Rabble is. Templates for JSON. Yeah. Moving, yeah. It's a builder. It's BL stands for builder language, but I can't remember yeah. what the R means. It's, it's taking away that to JSON and defining the JSON and views. And here be your There's some, uh, that's some more news actually. DHH is working on having something like that in Rails core. Oh, uh, really? Builder? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. In Rails 32, they, in the dim file, they provide jbuilder, yeah. I think is DHH's version of Rabble. The coolest, thing about, the coolest thing about Rabble is that you can have one template file that defines your XML and your JSON. Yeah. It's one one language, essentially, and then it will it will respond in the appropriate manner. Decorate. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Any other questions? I have another comment. Yeah. If you want to hear me talk more. I do. Uh, so in Docker after we do some something very similar to Decorator, we use presenters for some of the document uh, response stuff. Because we have, let's say, three or four different ways that you can get docs from us. Mm -hmm. And they're all just a little different. So based on how the response came to us, uh, we instantiate different <laughs> presenters. And then just we have a set of methods. It's kind of like an interface, but not really. So it's it's just duct typing. And you guys yeah. rolled rolled your own. Yeah, I mean it's just some classes <coughs> in the directory. So that's another thing that works really well with this type of this type of help. You know, like I need this thing, and it's a little different for these various various models. But you know, they all kind of do the same thing. So I just have a presenter that, that talks that talks this talks that, that message and, and does something. Okay. So cool. it's it's pretty simple. That's literally I think four classes or something, five classes. 
Yeah. One good question between uh, the difference of a presenter versus a decorator. Or are they the um, My understanding is decorators uh, present themselves as the object, and presenters map the object to something else. Uh, so I know. To serve this object for the purpose of yeah. yeah, we instantiate it with with whatever object and then based on that if it's a particular presenter All right. and does the same thing. Interesting. And I would like to retract what I said and say presenters is what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay.